Um, All right. All right. Here we go. Recording. Hi, I'm Mark Skinner. I'm here with Greg Cleghorn and Ken Nelson, and we are the three Black Pratt grads. And this week we are talking about second opinions. Each of us have had photographs that we felt were absolutely fantastic. And then when submitted, we got a second opinion. And uh, with all of that goes on in the editorial process, uh, a second image was selected uh, as the final image for that, uh, whatever that publication or that production was. And we're going to start with Kenneth. And there you go. Okay, cool. So, um, in recent uh, history, um, I uh, was involved with uh, submitting some work for inclusion in a museum show. And in retrospect, I well, they had a series of images from me that I that they saw, and this was the one that they they ultimately began using. Uh, and so, early this year, they posted this image up uh, as the out, outdoor exhibit. Uh, they cropped into it, but nonetheless, they used this image as the their select. Now, I enjoy this image, and uh, I actually posted this image uh, on my Instagram account because I think it's worthy of of, uh, of being included. But by that same token, uh, if I were to choose between this one and another one, I probably would have chosen the other one, and the other one that I would have chose is this one. And for me, this particular image is uh, more dynamic and it shows more action oriented. And it's uh, it's it's more about inclusion of multiple categories of people. Uh, but uh, of course, the, there were certain uh, people who were involved in the editing process and they had a certain uh, way that they were going to approach the exhibit. And then that determined which image they were going to use. Uh, it's not to say that um, each image, one image is better than the other. It's just for their purposes, they chose that one. Uh, if it were up to me and I were the only uh, uh, resource to choose, I would have chosen this one. I just, I when I, I remember photographing this and I remember the joy I had uh, during the whole procession of the march. And I remember using, uh, you, you're working on the fly and you're saying, okay, how can I make this image more interesting? Okay, okay, perspective, good. Let me go down, let me go down, let me shoot from the ground. And that's what I did. And I was like, wow. And what's interesting to me, or at least for this one, is that I, again, as I typically do when I photograph that low, I don't get on the ground to take the photo. I just put the camera near the ground, aim the camera up, and wish for best. And in most cases, in this particular instance, it was well framed. So... Uh. Can we can we can we take a look at the first one again? Yeah, we can take yeah. a look at the first one again. Now, this again, there's nothing wrong with this image, and I, I, right, I'm actually right. very appreciative of it. Uh, right, but but based on the fact that they wanted to do a group show, and they may have had other images that were similar, this one stood out in its focus. And yes. So in that yes. way, they said, you know, from this particular artist, we're going to select this image. Like you said, it's not that one's necessarily better than the other but from the editorial concerns that they had about how they were going to run the show yeah all right that particular uh image didn't quite say what they needed it to say compared to all the rest and to make it stand out in a in a different way yep. boy you did you see all of the other submissions skin you're making it you're sounding like you you were part of the curation team no i'm only speaking in regards to my no no not I, you the one oh. what mark just said oh okay you, he made it seem like he knew uh, what the, the other show. submissions look like. No, but I did see the show. I, I did see the show itself, and oh, and, okay. and and similar to, uh, you know, that other image, as good as it is, there were a lot of other images uh, that kind of felt the same way. But this is the only one that really said uh, exactly what it says. And the focus is uh, specifically on this individual with the flag, as opposed to as a side that in the individual with the flag as a sidebar, uh, or a secondary subject, or part of an ensemble, if you want to yeah. think of it. So yeah. th there are a lot of ensemble images in that in that selection. Okay, I mean, I like the lyrical waving of the flag and the people. Underneath the flag, and then oh, yeah. the, right. the other way right. it leads to the and, person, and then the person on the other side. 
yeah. you know, with their talking on the microphone. It's a more of a complete image. Right. And, and then the, the, the other. The, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So the other is like uh, right at crotch level. All you do, all I, and I can't help it, but I'm like looking it's, right in crotch. Right. And yeah. what I was going to say was that the, the show had a lot Their of hands it has. It's, it's currently like it's still running, image. and the show still has it has a lot of variety in it. But I think also on, in terms of the scope of uh, the images that are seen, uh, we see a lot more images that are similar to the first one. Uh, excuse me, the second one than we do this one. That's that's really it. Yeah. 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 Okay. I like the other one better. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, like this just, one? Well, it's this just, one or the other this one? This one is like right at crotch level. This one has a lot more, you know, eye contact. I'm looking right into these people. You know, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, it's more of a, a, a complete image for me, you know, but that's just my opinion. Okay. My humble opinion. Okay, but this great. One, I don't know. This is, is this, this one is... their hands are cropped? Are the fists cropped? In because in my screen, the fists are cropped. In you know, only this person on the far right, on your left, is okay. cropped. All right. Everything else is in is is well done. Is well yeah. in frame. Um, and, and everything else is like I'm like right at knee level, and I'm looking at crotches. Unless I cover you know, half you know, of the frame. You're actually <laughs> below knee level. The camera is actually below my knee. Oh, oh no, I see that. I know okay. that. But I'm saying okay. <laughs> but, for me, what I'm looking at, I'm like yeah. I'm looking at crotches. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I apologize. No, but, I mean, it's not a bad shot. I, I see what you see in it, but uh, I like the other one. The other one works for me. Okay. I, 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 I think that, Kenneth, maybe I'm wrong, but it sounds, it seemed to me like you're trying to uh, create people who seemed statuesque and trying to capture the monumental uh, experience that you were in the middle of. Right. Now, when I, when I was aiming, when I took the photograph, I know that there's some, it presents itself in a certain way. And only in the editing process did I did it confirm what I was going for, at least what I thought I was going to capture. And it actually yeah. did. And then you say to yourself, okay, does it work? And you say, yeah, it does work. Uh, and, and, that, and so I just, yeah. And that's where my affinity for the image came from. Uh, I think you should have laid on the ground, just gone for it. Just like no. full out, there prostrate, <laughs> get the shot. <laughs> Yeah. No, you don't yeah. want to do that. Right. I, 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 I would, but that's. I can't go that low, even if I were sitting down. Base. You have to be laying go. down. Yeah, man, get I'm into it. Lay, I'm not gonna lay down. That's Fulton Street Mall. I'm not gonna lay down. Uh, <laughs> You're well, like, I don't care what's happening. It, it's <laughs> Brooklyn, you know. It's still Brooklyn. I don't care. Yeah, I they might just trample you to death. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right, man. Let's move on, Greg. I think you're second up. Yep, I think Greg's next. Greg's yeah, second yeah. up. Okay, yeah. Greg. We're gonna go. I think we have your image here. Yeah, no, not no, mine. That's not mine either. Greg, that was mine. Hey. There you go. Can, can ooh yeah, tilt up or scroll down a little bit. Can you scroll down? This is the full frame. This is the full image. Or scroll Greg. up. Oh, it is. Yeah. Can this you is see the image. the uh, the the because uh, it's on my screen. It's cropped. Okay. You can see the top image, the uh, kite, actually the two kites there. Hello, did I lose you guys? I see, I see the kite, I see the kite. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, is it cropped okay. or you can see all of it? I can see all of it. Yeah, it's, it's underneath, it. it's underneath yeah. but I can see it. Okay. It's, under, right. it's right. underneath the, the red and white banner. Yes, red, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, Photographer of the Year, 2005, they had a competition when I was uh, in the Navy and I, I went around and I think it was like fleet week and I was going around, you know, getting shots of, you know, sailors on shore leave, you know, interacting with everybody. And I'm thinking, oh, this would be a great Navy photograph as a Navy photojournalist, right? And uh, I was uh, just kind of goofing off. I had a, some time and I went down to the, uh, the seaport. San Diego Seaport, and uh, laid down a blanket, had like a nice little, you know, picnic lunch going, and, uh, you know, this father and daughter started, you know, they brought their kites out, and I was like, oh, that's cool, 
and the sun was setting and you know it was like okay this is good and then i noticed the you know uss ronald reagan in the background across the bay so i was like oh this is a pretty cool shot so i took a couple of snaps i wasn't even thinking about it and i submitted all the other you know traditional sailor shots and uh somebody said they should, yeah, you should submit this one too i was like uh yeah but it's you know it's got what has this got to do you know navy is you know and what do you know this is the one they picked they absolutely loved it everyone's was like hey clayhorn did you see that picture in the paper i'm like no what what are you talking about even when i saw it i was like well i, I was looking for you know a sailor picture and i and that's the one they picked so like, well, like said, i mean it's i like, like it. it's editorial just... process you know you never know go ahead what I was gonna say I like it. It you know it, it shows that the uh, the U.S. Navy is patrolling the seas, keeping it safe for uh, for families to have good times in San Diego on the shore, uh, with uh, you know making sure that nothing ever happens. I mean that's yeah. I mean that, that, that I mean that's basically the 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 public relations that the the military wants, and that's you captured it. Yeah. Yeah. The. Uh, um... What do they call that peace at peace at home or whatever you know yeah. I guess yeah okay yeah I mean I, I began to see that later you know um, but on first blush I didn't uh, I didn't see that at all and I was like okay <laughs> so I mean you compare that to the you know the traditional sailor shaving out of his helmet you know it's like you know hoorah this is what we do we're rough and tough and we shave where we can you know that's what i was expecting right. but you know but uh, some kites and a sunset and you know i, I thought it was kind of hokey you know but you know the, i could see you know the 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 underlying image of it you know with the carrier in the background it's actually it had a lot of elements that i i um that i came to appreciate more in, in that respect so that actually opened up my my photojournalistic vision to see you know kind of outside the box where something that seems you know i won't say innocuous but seems kind of tame or whatever could actually be elevated to a different editorial level so that definitely opened my eyes to some stuff well i i have to ask and uh, please tell me if i'm wrong is it there's no you're wrong uh, there's uh, no 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 there's no jet in there at all on the right side taking off from the carrier or anything like that right Oh no 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 no! Man. Carriers that, they don't do flight ops in port. No. See that would that would be the only <laughs> thing that's missing from that is the the ability to compare the the kite, you know, from with the young person's kite with a with the jet, you know, that would be it. Okay. Well, yeah, that would Otherwise, be a sort of illustration. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of cool, you know, like uh, being on a carrier and you can go out. And then, like, like all the all the all the birds come to nest. They start doing flight ops from wherever they're uh, stationed on land. So once the carrier goes out and they hit that, uh, you know, I don't know, eleven mile mark or whatever, they start flight ops, and all these birds start coming in. It's like a dance. It's such a such a cool thing. And the same thing on the way in, when the air wing leaves, just before they get into port, they start flying out so no we didn't get that but uh, it's quite an evolution to see yeah mm -hmm. but yeah that would have been i could i could add some i've done a couple of air no 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 don't do that you I angels no, I just, you'll have you'll have to go back to san, san diego in the summer and see if you can in the spring and see if you can get uh get something like that yeah well the air show is pretty awesome the, the one they do in san diego is pretty cool the one they do in san francisco is pretty cool too all right moving right along Second one? Okay. Second, yeah, please. Next one. This one. Now, there was also after 9-11. Uh, after oh, no, actually, yeah, after 9-11, when uh, they um, started uh, deploying folks, Operation uh, Iraqi Freedom and uh, Noble Eagle, another bunch of operations, they sent a whole bunch of... Um, well-known writers, Dan Brown and a couple of others, Dan Brown from um, uh, Black Hawk Down, to hold these uh, writing workshops. And uh, I uh, went and I wrote a piece for them. 
And uh, I also told him, hey, I'm, I'm from New York. I got some pictures of uh, of the towers, you know, before, uh, you know, I used to, you know, my mom used to work in the South Tower. I used to go up there all the time. And um, I submitted a couple of, you know, uh, standard, you know, looking looking up into the looking up into the uh, to the heights from the ground, so they look like they're just disappearing into the sky. But um, this one that was in um, uh, Operation Homecoming is the name of the book um, by uh, sponsored by National Endowment for the Arts. Um, the poet laureate Dana Joya, he was amazing. I met him. And uh, they, they selected my essay and they love this photograph. And um, uh, I can see why now, you know, with the uh, Trade Center, the uh, South Tower, or excuse me, the North Tower, and looking north, and that's the uh, Empire State Building in the distance. And uh, that's actually a cloud cover. I don't know how clear the image is, but uh, it was a rainy day. And um, the coolest thing about being, you know, 107 stories in the sky, you know, a quarter mile up, is that the cloud cover, the rain clouds, were only down around the 30 to the 40th story, you know, uh, and every, every building above, you know, 40, 50 stories tall poked out above the clouds. And, um, you know, I could see the Trade Center Tower and um, the, uh, what is it, the... Um, Chrysler? No, no, that's that's the Empire, Empire State, State Building. Building. Yeah, but uh, no, I was trying to remember. Uh, out to the left, there's like a a club. Windows on the world. There was a club, you okay. know, and you know if you go up there, they they'd be serving formal well, dinners. It's a restaurant, at yeah. night. But at <laughs> night, they also had a dance club up there too. Mm-hmm. People would be you know all direct decked out and formaled up. And anyway, um, they chose this picture. I thought it was cool that the uh, Empire State Building was poking up above the clouds and. Uh, this is the one they selected. That's all I got on that one. Well, very, well, very glad well, well let me ask you this. Did they, what, did they submit some other, did you submit some other uh, images also or? Yes. Or, okay. That's, that's really kind of the crux of the discussion. Yeah. I, I okay. think there was a couple with the, uh, with the, um, that large brass globe that was in the in the courtyard between the towers right right and uh, there was the shot and i shot you know the traditional looking up at the towers where they kind of look like they're leaning toward each other going into infinity right but um this right is and, the one and i think everybody got that photo but i think this is really unique you know every every everyone who was there who was a photographer at the time you know before this, uh, probably not before this, but before 9-11 would go to the courtyard and look up and take the parallel, you know, uh, the, the towers converging. That was just what you did. But I think I, but I think but I think this is really special in that you caught the cloud cover, you know, uh, in a way that uh, is really. You know, it's heavenly, you know, but it's also very gray and there's, you know, it's imbued with so much uh, emotion um, long after this photograph was taken that, uh, you know, you can't help but like it. It's just a, it's just one of it's one of my favorite photos. I think it's great. Oh, cool. Well, thanks, Mark. Never mm-hmm. heard you say that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely imbued with some sadness because it's like. That used to be my favorite place in New York. Oh my gosh! They had, you know, in New York. Every, I think everybody gets some favorite places. You know, as far as quiet, you know, it was always quiet way up there in the sky, or you know, the cloisters up in uh, Fort Tilden or Tyron, excuse me. And uh, you know, different different spots around the city. And uh, this was this was special to me. But you know, you know, it's gone. So, and uh, the, I guess the the. Uh, the end of the essay that I wrote was, um, you know, the president calls for um, the nation or the armed services to be ready. And then this, I am, you know, it's, it was a pretty good, uh, yeah, let's check it out. Um, Operation Homecoming. It's a, it's a random house, I believe. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. You had a third one. I do? Yes, yeah. you do. That one's that one's uh, I'm you know it's it's I have I have nothing for that one you know 
Oh. Just uh, you know, it was a. I had I well the, the 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 other picture that I wanted to show with that one was like the uh, the uh, antithesis to this. You know, the protester, you know, holding a sign okay. that said, you know, stop murderous cops. Okay. But you know, it's like um, not common, but it's like these guys were you know vastly outnumbered. You know, there was just so much you know emotion emotion there's so much um outrage and then you know they're in a position like <laughs> you know i like, we still gotta we gotta still keep it together out here but um uh it, it's that's just an ongoing thing you know and I, I really don't have much to say about that other than you know I, it's it's a well, tough job well, but you know somebody's got to do it but what was, what was it? What? start doing it right what were some of the alternative images to this one that were being considered before this one was selected? Well, um, I had some close-ups, but they, the, uh, the officers looked really uncomfortable. I got one of this guy who was uh, per perspiring quite a bit, you know, and it, it didn't look uh, flattering. I don't know what the word is. It, it just wasn't selected. So um, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. You know, it's a tough situation on both sides. You know, there there was a definite a lot of wrongs and it kind of, you know, it reverberated around the planet, you know? I mean, protests, literally protests around the planet, you know? So we'll see what happens. I just, I'll, this is just something that's an ongoing ongoing project you know i'll keep shooting and keep submitting and um see what happens you know i hope this resolves in a in a way that's equitable you know not defund the police but you know uh i do can i can say there was a uh a uh an event or an episode out here there was a guy who was in the wrong you know he's uh making lewd gestures to this woman and uh police came out one came out and stopped him, and then the next group of police that came by, one was a uh, um, a uh, not a paramedic, but a uh, parapsychology. Is that is that the right term? He was he was trained in mental health issues. Okay. In in a police uniform, and I was like, wow, they've already started making changes, mm -hmm. which is which which for me was a good sign because there's a lot of mental illness out there now. Mm -hmm. And um, they they can't, you know, everything isn't a nail, you know, and if you're the hammer, everything's a nail. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that they started sending, um, you know, people with mental health experience out to uh, to deal with stuff and de-escalate. So hopefully, you know, people won't get shot or strangled or you know, get their knee pressed into their neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. You know, that's all I got. Okay. Okay, Mark. All right. Um, my photographs are basically uh, broken down into two groups. Uh, they're both uh, concerning uh, covers for a small magazine that I worked for in New Jersey. And this magazine is uh, edited and, and published by a, a woman who uh, is uh, also doing uh, enhancement classes for kids from fifth grade to um, 12. And the photographic uh, the, enhancement? What's, no, you mean no. Enhancement? The, the, well, uh, after school enhancement, meaning uh, if you've got uh, language arts uh, skills that need to be polished up, she and uh, a bunch of other tutors uh, work with kids to make sure that they are prepared for any of the state exams, that they do uh, the SAT uh, work and uh, PSAT work and just helping to improve their grades. It's very, you know, there are a lot of organizations that do this, but she does this in central Jersey in, in two locations. And she can also do this uh, with kids online. And uh, 
this particular image, uh, she had asked me to photograph some kids at the beach. And I thought it was just these two kids. Uh, I wanted to, I, I selected the kids, but I, I wanted to make sure that, you know, we knew that it was the beach. And this is what I had submitted originally. If you go to the second one, the second image, um, this was what was finally selected for the cover. And as much as I like the original photo, I can see that that particular photo uh, was probably, you know, too New York Times for what was going on. I mean, I don't want to say New York Times because I haven't worked for them, but it, it's probably too New York, too, uh, too uh, grown up, rather. And I think uh, the big difference the other one is with or this the, one. No, the other one. I think this one it says kids at the beach a little bit more. You know, uh, well, you, you can know, you actually can see, see the beach, <laughs> right? You 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 can you certainly differentiate the difference between the sand and the surf. You see the the water water you know hitting the beach, and they look like little kids. You know, if you look go back to the first one for a second. You know, the kids look very, very sophisticated. It looks like an ad, practically. I think maybe that's what I should have said. Or something editorial uh, that would be part of an article for, for an older reader. Uh, and the reason why I say that, and so, you know, that was my first opinion. Then the second opinion, go back to that second one again. Uh, I think what was really good was that the, the magazine is a, groupings of stories that were written by students in the classes. And I think that this photo probably better matches uh, really the content of the magazine. And so sometimes, you know, with second opinion, you, you just have to go, you know what, as much as I love the first picture, this was the one that was selected, but it was selected for very good reasons. If we go to the next set, right? This was a photograph that I liked a lot. We did a mock-up, and I thought it was great because there was kids in the park, and it said summer. Uh, and this was, I think, the next year, and it said summer. But if you go to the last image, which would be the fourth one, uh, this one says more summer camp. You know, I think the one that I liked a lot, which was the previous one with the kids in the big circle, that particular image probably just seems like kids playing a game together rather than saying specifically a summer camp you know there's a kind of a summer camp theme that may that sounds like that looks more like summer fun in the neighborhood you know or summer fun in the community rather than summer fun at camp and if you go to the next one they ultimately selected this cover because they felt that it better represented uh, what they wanted to say and you know, what the kids were about and and that's it and so that's all I had to say about second opinions is that sometimes there are these darlings that you have in terms of your photographs and you say wow I, I really love this picture I want this one but at the end of the day there are times when you have to kind of say you know what as much as I love this photo uh, the publication or the uh, the, the where this is going to be displayed, there's a, a, a sort of a, a a group idea that's trying to be conveyed in inside a magazine or if it's a show, and it's not all about how fantastic your one photo is. Sometimes it has to just really match the content a little better, and that was really all I had to say. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I have nothing I can, I can add. I got nothing. <laughs> well, I don't know if anybody if anybody's interested in uh, you know I think I think I wouldn't I don't know if she does uh, Zoom meetings I'm I'm presume she does at this point you can go look up uh, City Kids World and you know see if you can sign up I know they did uh, year long classes but I'm I'm sure they they can probably fit kids in if you're struggling with this remote learning you know give it a city try kids it's, it's, it's like yeah, kind I mean, of a, the, they don't look like city kids to me you know what i mean no, like i was no. expecting something more urban that's know. the name of the publication I, I i hear you that's the name of the publication 
Um, you know, these were from 10 and nine years ago. So I don't, you know, I, I, I can't really speak to that, but I can say that, uh, if someone's really interested in, in, you know, getting some, uh, tutoring done, just, you know, take a look, see if they can find them. I mean, they're still there and they're still doing well. And if you're in central Jersey, there's two locations that you can, you can visit, you know, but I'm sure she does uh, online as well. Well, Jersey is a lot greener than New York is anyway. Is that, is that the idea? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the cities, the cities in, uh, in New Jersey, a lot of them, a lot of New Yorkers kind of go, oh yeah, I get it. It's like Queens. It's, you know, that's, that's just how, you know, we tend to see things sometimes, but they're, okay. they're real, real cities, you know, unless you're talking about some of the, you know, more that- uh, older cities like Newark and Camden and Trenton and Jersey city. Good. Tolbogan. I think the sensibilities about Hoboken. You from Hoboken? I know Hoboken. <laughs> the sensibilities about people who are, I mean, I think many, um, more, many more people are now uh, photographically savvy. Um, so I, I don't. I, maybe twenty years ago, they were not uh, involved in multiple ways of seeing or multiple ways of seeing one particular item. And I think that, you know, when you go and you see what's online now, you see that there are variations on one photograph or one. There's multiple perspectives. Many more people have multiple perspectives on a single item or a single thing. And more so than I've ever noticed before. So, in other words, when they sit down and have lunch and they want to photograph their food, they're not only photographing it from their perspective. They're actually creating style within the photograph. So it appeals to a more, so they're not just shooting, photographing one version of it. They're photographing multiple versions of the, of the same thing. And you're seeing it inherent in, in, in photographs online. Because you'll see them post one image one day, and then the next day you'll say, oh, that's a different, that's a different angle of the same shot they did yesterday. So oh, they're, yeah. So they're doing... I mean, I- I mean, I, I too, I post some things like, like the, the, you know, when I went to the TWA hotel, I had about five or six images that, that came from that. And maybe at least three of those might've been of the plane that was there. So Mm -hmm. there are times when I kind of go, well, I'll post this one. And then a few weeks later, oh, I like that. I'll post that one. So it, it, yeah, it depends. Yeah. And I think it's, and again, I'm, I'm trying to marry, and I guess for and I may be getting off the subject, but I would just want to say that I'm probably more marrying it to the digital age than the film age, because I think in the film age, you would not have shot multiple versions. You would have just maybe, you know, uh, someone who's not uh, commercial would not have taken multiple photographs. Right. I was gonna, right. I was going to say, you know, I was going to say all the commercial work that you do, you, you know, you always have to shoot variants right. because you never know. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, there was more of the sense of, uh, selecting but even so even if you were doing something for uh, a news story that was like a profile of someone you, you would have to take a few portraits of them you know in one corner you know, near the window or whatever you know a variety of, of, yeah. of images had to be created yeah. so that basically editors had choices you know you always have to provide choices if someone else's opinion is part of the editorial process if yeah. you're working completely independently and you're showing in galleries exclusively and your work is just what is being uh, displayed, right. then you have that kind of autonomy. But if, you, yep. but if you're someone who's working, anyone who's working for any organization or any other individual, even when you do private work, uh, you, you're still subject. I mean, you get first at it, but you're still subject to uh, the client's uh, you know, ideas about what, how they want to uh, see the subject. Yeah, I think uh, I, there were a couple of times when um, I was uh, asked to take a, to photograph uh, an event, and uh, the only requirement was that I would supply them with all the film, whether whether you know the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so once I finished the the event, I said, "Here's the film." <laughs> And it was up pretty good. Them, you know, it was up to them to, uh, you know, process it and print what they wanted. Uh, but mm-hmm. that's the way we worked it out. I said, here's my flat fee, but you can do the printing if you want to. If you want me to do it, it's going to cost more. Yeah, okay, I'll, we'll do it ourselves. Boom. Hmm. Yeah, wow. I, think you gave, I think you gave me the, 
gave me the film to my wedding. When you photograph that, you say, here you go. <laughs> Probably did. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, that's that's sort no, of you're like, you're like, you know how to do this. Here. <laughs> well, wedding's a lot of work, so I can understand it. And, uh, okay. All right, great. Hey, Mark, can you, you want to close it out? Sure. Uh, so basically, we just had some thoughts about about second opinions and in, 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 in terms of our, our work. I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. And that was just to say that, um, you know, when you're a working artist, you can either work in complete autonomy and your choices won't be, you know, your second opinions won't be there until someone decides to either show your work or buy your work. Yeah. But if you're working for someone else initially, uh, you're always subject to second opinions and you can't get too married to uh, an image of a given shoe. And that was really it. So with that, I will say this is uh, Kenneth Nelson, Greg Cleghorn, and Mark Skinner. We are the three Black Pratt photographers. I didn't say photographers the first time. Uh, and we are going to talk to you next time. <laughs> we're Pratt grads. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, we're great. We're not only black, we went to school. Okay. <laughs> and we graduated. Yeah, right. Uh, that's a, yeah. So anyway, that's it. Okay. Deuces. <laughs>